Welcome to Off Duty. We are here in historic Fenway Park. It is the home to the Boston Red Sox. It is also the oldest baseball park in America. And we are standing next to the guy who is lucky enough to come to work here every day, Dave Miller. He's the director of grounds. What's a better job than this? There isn't one. This is just the best. And you are you are the guy basically who is the godfather of striping. And that is the phenomenon that we all see, the patterns on the field. How different is striping from stadium to stadium? Well, patterns are only limited by your imagination. Certainly at this level, safety and playability is our first priority. But whether it's a tr traditional checkerboard or something festive like the Sox logo, it's about having fun too. And it's not something you can just have to have professional equipment to do. Homeowners can do it too, and you're gonna teach us that a little bit later in the show. But for people who don't actually know what striping is and how it happens, you're not coloring the grass, you're, you're bending the grass. Correct. A light stripes mode away from you and a dark stripes mode toward you. You think of velvet or velour. If you run your fingers against it, you're changing the nap of the grass. And so it's just about uh, mowing in a certain direction that reflects that light differently on the grass. Now, this is mostly for the enjoyment of the people in the stands or the people watching on TV, because you can't see it as much when you're on the field. Is that right? And it certainly doesn't affect play. Correct. That's the goal for it, not to affect play. But certainly on TV or higher up, you, you certainly see the patterns more then. Sounds just like it does on TV. Now, some people put all these fancy degrees on their walls. I think you've done better. This is your artwork. These are all fields you've striped. Well, I'm fortunate to have a great staff, but yeah, this is kind of a collaboration of artwork we've done on fields throughout the year. Tell us about a few of them. Well, this is a tartan plaid that came uh, as an inspiration from an Argyle uh, sweater I saw. When Bruce Springsteen was here, we actually wrote Bruce on the infield and made the B a Red Sox B. Is he a Red Sox fan? Well, he, I think he was that day. He was that day. <laughs> what happens if you make a mistake? You know, it's very easy to fix. If you make a mistake, it's nothing to worry about. Just go back to the previous line before and start over. That's it. Just That's roll it. it the other way. It's absolutely. You just start with that fresh edge and you just start right over. Let's walk over and check out the Toro Triplex Reel Mower. It has three cutting units on it, two in the front and one underneath the seat. And they're reel mowers, very much like the, the old time push mowers you would see your father's using. And there's a roller in the front that helps stand up the grass with these grooves. The units then cut behind it, and behind the cutting unit is a roller that helps bend in that design. And the roller, and the roller is what basically makes the striping pattern because it's flattening the blades one way or the other and the light reflects off of that. Absolutely. Any mower will make a pattern in the grass with its tires and its blade, but the rollers really help etch in that design. 65,000 square feet of Kentucky bluegrass here in the outfield. That's about how big, an acreage? About an acre and a half. An acre and a half. So many homeowners might have that, and if they want to try this themselves, is this the one of the machines they would use to do it? This is the perfect machine for them. It's a Simplicity Lawn and Garden tractor, and the back of the deck has rollers on it, so it follows any contours in your lawn, so it can't scalp. But what's great about it also is those rollers are just like the rollers on the expensive equipment here, and they're going to put a pattern in your lawn while you mow. And how short are you cutting the grass here, and how short should homeowners cut it? Because it's different. That's a great question. We're mowing at an inch and a quarter here. Homeowners should be mowing between two and a half and three and a half inches because that extra grass blade is going to shade the roots so it doesn't dry out as quickly. And, you know, they don't have to worry about playability issues. So I would encourage them to mow high and mow often so they're following what's called the one-third rule. They're never cutting off more than one third at a time, so they're not out there bailing hay, basically, in their yard. <laughs> and you mentioned a lot of these tips in your book. It's what, picture-perfect mowing techniques for lawns, landscapes, and sports. It's all in here, patterns, tips, all of that. Absolutely, Turf 101, but if you want to mow like the majors, the information's right there, step-by-step -step instructions. And in fact, it teaches you how to make your own roller at home. If you go to a lawnmower repair shop, they're gonna have a graveyard of mowers behind the store that uh, they have lawnmower handles on. And then we just take PVC pipe and you can cut it to whatever length you want and we fill it with concrete. We make end caps out of, uh, out of plywood to hold it in there, find the center point, put your bolt on, and then you can just connect it. That's gonna help put that pattern in your lawn and add to that curbside appeal. And now the one thing I've always wondered too is 
how do you keep your lines so straight? I mean, I've always imagined you're, you're out here with like string or whatever, or somebody on the sidelines, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. Well, certainly if we're doing a, a unique pattern like the Sox logo, we'll measure that out. But otherwise, a homeowner can use the side of the driveway or pick a point in the distance, like a, a window, a tree, a shrub, and mow toward it. That's what we do. We'll pick a point on the wall pad or on the track and mow toward it. Well, lucky for us, the socks are on the road right now. They don't mind if we play around with the paddles a little bit, do they? I don't think so. I think, in fact, you can help. I can help. Moment of truth, striping the oldest ballpark in America. Hope I don't mess up. Oh, uh, have fun. All right.